the Warriors made a huge run at the end of the third with stellar defense led by Draymond Green and the new guy, Gary Payton II, and Jordan Poole. The Hornets attacked Bielitsa, but the drop defense forwarded them. So let's have a look at plays of the crucial stretch at the end of the third quarter. The Hornets are sending the ball ahead to Gordon Hayward, and in theory, Bielitsa should cover Hayward, but Draymond is going to call him off so you can see he's doing either a great cactus impersonation or he's signaling to everybody. This arm seems to be saying, hey, Wiggins, stay attached to Kelly Oubre. And this arm is saying to Bielitsa, hey, I've got this guy. So stay off him and, and go cover the next nearest guy. And there Draymond does pick up Gordon Hayward. And then great lateral movement on Draymond's part staying with Hayward despite moving side to side and Hayward has to pull out. I can't say the Hornets offense was very fluid at this point. They had already been scoreless for a few minutes here and so they seem a bit desperate. This guy tries driving on Jordan Poole in isolation and Jordan Poole is up to the challenge. Miles Bridges had been kind of unstoppable for a lot of the game. He was really impressive and you get the sense that he isn't quite used to being the man because the Warriors now are throwing this soft double team on him. So he is driving towards the basket. And in fact, he gets Jordan Poole on his hip, but Bielitsa is rotating to meet him. So probably in the future, Miles Bridges is going to be used to seeing these kind of doubles and he's going to realize there's a guy under the basket cutting and he can just dump off a little pass to him. But instead, Bridges tries this pretty ambitious double pump flying to the left bank shot and I don't know maybe his thinking is that I've got a guy under the basket anyway and he can get the rebound but anyway this is a crazy hard shot <laughs> it takes just the wrong kind of bounce and Lamella comes flying over the back and sends it out of bounds next time down the court Charlotte comes up asks for a simple pick and roll here's Hayward He's going to ask for this fellow to set a screen. I'm sure that he's picked this fellow not for his brilliant screening, but for the fact that Bielitsa is guarding him. Okay, so here's a screen. You can see the Warriors' scheme for Bielitsa on pick and roll defense is drop. He's way back here. If he was someone very mobile, he could be all the way up here, maybe harassing the, the ball handler. But if Bielitsa does that, the ball handler is going to blow right by them. So it's better that he's back there in drop position. Hayward turns the corner. I don't know, if he was a younger man, he might have just stopped here and popped. But he's not a younger man, and so he gets stopped by the drop coverage. Tries to bail out to the corner, but Draymond is out there in a flash. And so now Hayward has to completely reset the play. 10 on the shot clock. Now he doesn't have a lot of great choices. Now he's going to just ISO Andre Iguodala, which doesn't feel like plan A at all. It's a drive and kick, but Ubre is not really all that open. And secondly, it's Ubre, so I think Draymond is not scared of Ubre shooting. And third of all, Kelly Ubre seemed kind of low energy. The universe put him in a box for this game. I thought he was going to be out for revenge, but I, I think he ended up scoring zero points. He just did not seem to be in the flow of anything. One of the Dub Nation HQ commenters said from the game that the crowd booed Kelly on every play, and I don't know if that got into his head. That probably felt bad. Anyway, psychological distress or no, this is not basketball advantage. So he just tries to make something out of nothing and he drives and Draymond just picks him clean and then goes down and then he just grabs the ball. Yoink, knocks it free. GP2, he's everywhere. You can see that Steph Curry is here sort of sick on the bench, but he is so excited when Draymond gets this steal that he jumps up and he starts flexing on behalf of Draymond. You see now he's, now he jumps up off the bench. He's gonna start throwing his towel and yelling. Okay, the game is starting to get out of hand for Charlotte. They haven't scored in a really long time, so they stick with the basics and they're going to call another wing pick and roll. Here comes a screen, GP2. The ball is going to try to dribble GP2 into the screen and then have advantage so he can attack Bielitsa. Bielitsa knows this, and so he's in drop coverage. He's so far back, and in theory, this will give him some runway, so he's. <laughs> He's got about 
10 plus feet so that he can back up and not have the ball just explode by him. And this drop coverage works like a charm. You see that now this man is just ISOing Bielitsa and thinking, I can get by this guy. But with enough of a cushion, Bielitsa turns and really good contest there. Two hands up and the layup is bad. Scrappy rebounding there by Andre. The Warriors defense really have the Hornets locked up right now. The Hornets are just trying to exploit Bielitsa and it's not working. So another pick and roll with Bielitsa's man. I think this was supposed to be a fake screen and there was going to be a ghost screen and he would just jump out and he'd get the ball so that he could then isolate Bielitsa. So no more of this messing with the drop coverage. But GP2, man, he's a dogged defender. And so Charlotte does try to get this little pocket pass over, but GP2 just gets his hand on it and knocks it free. He almost gets the ball. It's a real scramble. Bielitsa kind of got ahead of himself. He realizes, whoa, okay, I got to go back. We don't have the ball. So he's running back to recover. They try this again. So here's another screen. Bielitsa, as I mentioned, he's not playing up here next to his man. He's in drop coverage so that there's lots of runway here so that he can contain this drive, hopefully. There's a screen. So far, so good. He didn't get blown by. This guy tries to cross over Bielitsa. Bielitsa is staying with him, and GP2 is digging down from his man on the arc and tries this kind of clever pass to this baseline cutter, but Jordan Poole is on the case. He gets his hand in and just deflects that pass as it comes in. Knocks it free. Andre grabs it. Thanks for the free steal. Next play down. The Hornets don't really know what to do, so they're just going to resort to passing it around the perimeter until someone has a half-open three. Pass. Pass. This is Bielitsa's man who got picked up in transition. To be fair, this is an open three, so I, I think this is not a bad shot. He fires it up. And it's just this giant scrum here. Draymond is going to get into a tug of war, and he just digs all the way to the ground, and he's going to get his hand in there and just knock it free again. This is the second time on the same spot of the court just pulls the ball free, grabs it. After Draymond's done with the slip and slide, the Warriors flow into more offense. Here Bielitsa sets a back screen on Oubre, which is going to spring Jordan Poole free. Now he's free, nice pass from Draymond. He gets the ball on the run, so he's going to get by this defender. Forces the goaltend. Next play down, Charlotte is still trying to exploit Bielitsa. They've changed their alignment subtly. So here's the same pick and roll, Bielitsa's man. So in theory, Hayward can now attack Bielitsa, but they try something clever. They put a new person over here who was not there in previous plays, and they are hoping that the screen is set, and then if it's slipped hard, this man will roll. And Bielitsa, in the meantime, is trying to contain Hayward, who's going to be coming around the screen. Andre is going to be fighting around the screen, which means that this hard roll should be open. And if it's not open, it'll only be because GP2 has to rotate to stop the roll, which should then leave this man open. So there it is. It's all going as prophesized. Hard roll. GP2 digs down from his man to try to deter this little pocket pass. Bielitsa is in drop, as we talked about. Andre is trailing behind. That leaves this man open. But the pass is not quite crisp enough, and GP2 just hustles his butt over to contest this shot. So the, the guy has to give up the ball. He gives it to Kelly in the corner. Kelly Oubre is not really having a positive energy experience on the court. He hoists it. Charlotte definitely running out of ideas. Here they just decide to ISO GP2, which just feels like not a great play. He actually does get by GP2 with a pretty nice move, which forces 
Andre to rotate to stop the drive. If he had been totally alert, he could have zipped a pass to the dunker spot and gotten a dunk out of it, but uh, he doesn't. He tries to finish over Andre. One little thing I like is watching GP2 on this play. Andre has switched to help this guy. This man is open, and so GP2 actually hustles over to cover this man on the switch. Here you see GP2 is anticipating the dish to this dunker, and he's just bolting over to try to disrupt that. He bolts so fast he actually runs into the man. And the ball almost falls in his lap. There's a whole micro chess match in this little play. Draymond sets the screen. Steph takes the screen. The Hornets have seen that Steph is not really himself. He's definitely looking kind of sick. They take no chances. They still send two men to go double team sick Steph Curry there. And now it's a matter of can we punish the double team Two go to Steph. Draymond is free. Steph is going to get him the ball real fast. So one of these Charlotte defenders has to rotate. Usually it's the low man who rotates, the low weak side defender. But for some reason, Charlotte doesn't do that. Instead, they send this fellow in to intercept Draymond. The second that this defender rotates to meet Draymond, you see the veteran Bielitsa says, uh, excuse me, my man has left me alone. I'm now open. This defender has to zone two. And so Draymond gets into the air and this defender is anticipating that the pass is gonna go to the big guy who's yelling for the ball. And Draymond gets in the air and you see him pre-commit. You see he's leaning this way, but instead Draymond wins the chess match and he bolts the pass instead to the other person on the arc, which is GP2. GP2 is going to miss this shot. That's fine. As long as he keeps shooting and keeps the defense honest and has a decent overall percentage, that's good enough. But I like this show of confidence from Steph. You can see he's going to pull out the premature celebration on behalf of Peyton. He's going to do cut along baseline. And he sees the shot go up. And he sticks out his hand, flashing. I believe this is the OK3 sign as the ball's in the air and it clanks, but you know, still appreciate Steph with the premature celebration. That's being a good teammate. Here's a replay of Draymond muscling the ball away. Really nice play. Steph Curry thinks this is so inspirational, man. He jumps up again. And look, he, even though he's sick, he's coming through with the celebration. He's doing two-sided flex muscles because of Draymond's feat of strength to pull that ball out. Draymond chucks the ball out. And then look at this flexibility. Steph had been doing the I see you, you are strong celebration. But then Draymond starts slipping on, on some wet spot on the court, which to be honest is not real funny business because people have gotten seriously injured just from this kind of wet spot, including memorably Steph. But once it's clear that Draymond was gonna be okay, Steph immediately pivots from you are strong to clowning Draymond and now he's pointing at him going ha you you fell down <laughs> I was imitating your strong muscles now I'm going to imitate your sloppy feet and you can see he was pointing at him and then now he's going to I think quite insensitively start pretend to slip on the ground like he's like Draymond <laughs> on the replay you can see Steph and he's now in the process of clowning Draymond for slipping. <laughs> if you just watch his feet, Steph is imitating Draymond flopping around. <laughs> he's kicking like he's, he's falling over. Is that what a friend does, just clowning you when you're slipping and sliding in front of 20,000 people?